My dad was the son of immigrants. His mom and dad, my grandma and grandpa, were born in Sicily. Coincidentally, in the same town, Augusta, Sicily. But they never knew each other until they arrived in America through Ellis Island. They met in New York, and within a year of coming to America, they married. My dad was the oldest of four children, and he pretty much was working the minute he could because Grandma and Grandpa were struggling. My dad was an amazing individual who worked his butt off to provide for his family. He went to college, graduating as a part-time student, but working full-time, and then going to school during the day. So he was working day and night to provide for his mom and three younger siblings. Then he got married and was providing for us too. He had a stroke at age 57. He lived another 36 years. What did he live? He died when he was 96. So he lived another 31 years with a stroke. I mean, he would swim every day in San Diego in the condo pool using his left arm and left leg. He'd exercise outside of the water, but he was just amazing in that he never complained about his stroke. He just kind of took the attitude, life is tough and you deal with it, and he moved on. I have nothing but gratefulness that God gave him to me as a father. He was an inspiration and an amazing man, an amazing father, amazing husband, and taught me a lot just by his example. I would help him get to bed every night. Not every single night, but I would, but my sisters, we lived in town, we, we tag teamed, and we saw to it that one of us was always there at night to get him to bed. Grandpa, he, he was an electric scooter, zipping around, playing bridge, playing poker, zipping around the apartment, and the one memory, the one memory I have of him that is so special was after he was getting ready for bed, he, he, would, he would have to work really hard to get up on one leg to then swivel from his chair and get onto the bed. And then he got onto the bed, and he had to get onto a piece of wood that I fixed for him that was 12 inches wide and an inch deep and five inches long. And I put it on the side of the bed so that when he swiveled from the chair, holding onto the pole to get onto the bed, he landed on that board on his butt. And that there I put a bullseye. It said, place butt here. <laughs> he landed on his butt, and then with one arm and one leg, he kind of slid up to the top of the bed. And then I pulled the board out, and then he leaned over, put his head on the pillow, and pulled his legs up into the bed. He got into the bed, pulled the covers up to his chin. He reached in, grabbed his rosary, and he looked up at me. And with a smirk, he said, piece of cake, <laughs> isn't it? I love running. I loved it so much. It meant everything to me. Running was pretty basic in that, you know what, it all depends on how badly you want it. You can be as good as you want to be if you're willing to put in the time and the effort to work through the pain. Sometimes they describe the barrier that you have to break to get beyond the parent barrier, to get beyond the discomfort. Once you're beyond it, then you can be really good. I mean, I'm not bragging, I was good at it. I beat everybody. My sophomore year, I went to nationals. I went to the NCAA with the top 12 runners in the nation as a sophomore. So I was thinking, sophomore year this good, I'm going to be maybe the number one in the nation my senior year. But God dealt me a different hand of cards and because I herniated badly in my right shin. Coming back to Notre Dame after the NCAA championships where it ran in Provo, Utah. Coming back, I was running like crazy. I was running 100 miles a week, 100 miles a week, 20 miles, 20 miles, but I did so much damage to my, on my shin. 
This right leg is all numb now. I never ran as good as I did my sophomore year. I still won all my dual meets. I won the big state run championship, but that's Indiana. You, you know, running against IU and Purdue runners. And I won a couple regional meets with Northwestern and whatever, but I never really ran as well as I did my sophomore year. I, I ran well enough to letter to monogram, but I, I never achieved greatness. So that was humbling. That was a disappointment, but, but you know, I'd say that my dad set a good example for me and showed me that life isn't fair. So it was a greatness I was teased with. I've got some records. Notre Dame record for 12 years for steeplechase. That was my race. You have to hurdle the hurdles, and then there's a water barrier that, where you have to run, step onto the barrier, then leap out over 12 feet of water, then keep running. I liked it because it broke the monotony of just running around a track. And I had long legs so I could hurdle easily, and I could hurdle over the water. And I had the feeling. I was so good at it that I could, I would destroy them mentally as I would approach <laughs> that barrier because I loved the barrier. And they would, I think, have some trepidation. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think, I thought, this, this is where I'm gonna, I would, I'm gonna add 20 yards to my distance away from them because I would always speed up when I would go to the barrier. Whereas I think they started getting a little nervous. <laughs> Great memories. I, I'm still grateful for it. I, I found out I was a better student when I was healthy and running. My last two years, it was harder for me to study or sleep because I had excess energy. Again, life is not fair. You learn to. For me, it was hard. I felt so sorry for myself my junior and senior year a little bit. I didn't get over it completely. I feel kind of sorry. I was. God damn it! I could have been beating these guys. I could have been going to nationals. I couldn't, so. But sometime I'll show you what I made my sophomore year that I had on my wall in my dorm room. It's a big collage of pictures of me running and all the other great runners, the, the great runners around that were my inspiration and then some quotes by some people who on why do we run? Oh, here it is. Is this a thing? You know, I, I can't bear to part with it yet, but it meant so much to me. I, I put it on the wall to inspire me. There I am. Yeah, but these were the great runners. Bill Clark was all American at Notre Dame. Neil Zathabek from Hungary. Jim Ryan and Kelly from Ethiopia. This was the cross country in the snow that I ran in. I'm in there someplace. That's really cool. Yeah, I just can't bear to throw it out. But I thought I had something else where I had sayings and quote, but no, here it is. I did another one. I had two. See if you can read these two quotes. An endurance runner often thinks he is choosing a socially approved and oriented activity, but soon discovers his new way of life is one of isolation and loneliness. The rest of his world finds it hard to understand a man who deliberately chooses the hard way, the way of daily rigorous routine and hardship. This alone sets him apart. That the full extent of his estrangement from his fellow men does not really hit him until an hour or so before the race is to start. He suddenly feels the enormity of the task before him. Now, for the first time, he understands who Alan Silito called his short story, the loneliness of the long distance runner. But there are compensations for this, for as condition and control are acquired, the runner gradually senses that he has found a harmony within himself and with all about him that is certainly different and perhaps greater than he has ever known before. 
I sometimes think that running has given me a glimpse of the greatest freedom a man can ever know, because it results in the simultaneous liberation of both the body and the mind. I wrote that, yeah. Running is creative. The runner does not know how or why he runs. He only knows that he must run. And in doing so, he expresses himself as he can in no other way.